Right, you have been texting in your hundreds, or at least one person has texted about 80 times. Thank you for that, whoever you are. We love you. And we read nearly all of your texts. Um, however, there's lots of lovely questions have been texted in, as well as one or two been put into the box that we've read. So we would like now, Bishop Pete, to put you on the spot with some big questions. Are you ready? Uh-oh. You'll be fine. Right, come on, guys, come and sit down. Right, hopefully, the, hopefully it'll work here. Right, what are we going to start with? What are we going to start with? No flossing, I'm not flossing. <laughs> okay, first question. Can you floss? <laughs> So, so, I, I'm, I'm feeling quite good about myself that I actually know what flossing is. A year, a year ago, I completely embarrassed myself by showing you how badly I could dab. And apart from, apart from knowing that I'm supposed to swing my hands. The answer is no, I can't. Brilliant. Next question, next question. So, you said in your talk that you looked across at your friend and you didn't want him to become a Christian. Yeah. So why, at yeah. that moment, did yeah. you not want to become, him to become a Christian? At that time, it was because I was not a Christian. So now, I want all my friends to become Christians. Can we be clear about that first? <laughs> at that time, I didn't want him to become a Christian because I knew enough to know that when you become a Christian, a load of stuff has to change. And I felt threatened at the thought that my friendship with Tim might suffer if he started behaving in ways that were different to the way he and I used to behave, if he started going to activities like going to church or whatever that I wasn't used to. I couldn't see how our friendship could survive. In the end, it was me who became a Christian, not him. And it was him who had to adjust to the fact that I became a different person. Wow, thank you for that. Next question, ice cream or chocolate cake? Yes, you have to choose. Uh, well, it, it, it depends on the flavor of the ice cream, but chocolate cake. Oh, controversial. This was one of my favorite introductions to a text ever. Hello, Mr. Bishop Pete. How do you think I can help my atheist friends come to Jesus without p appearing to be pushy? Um, by, by being the best follower of Jesus you can be, which will mean by praying for them and by loving them. I have never known anybody who's been argued into following Jesus. That's not how I think it works but by faithfully hanging on in there, being a good friend and a kind friend to your atheist friend, by soaking it up when they're mean to you about following Jesus, by just keeping on going and praying for them day by day, holding them. Do you know, I am still praying. Um, I was part of a group of four, uh, five friends um, at school, and two of us were believers, Christians, followers of Jesus, and three were not. Um, Andy, the other... Christian and I have been praying for those other three friends every Wednesday for 40 years. And I will continue until my dying breath. Um, at various stages, we've been more or less encouraged by the chances that one or two of the others might become Christians like us. Um, we're still waiting. Uh, but I would encourage you to hang on in there. You be a faithful follower of Jesus, um, and that's the best where you can serve them. Do they know you're praying? They do now. They do now. For many years they didn't, but we're grown-ups now, and we, uh, we talk perhaps more openly than we knew how to do it when we were younger. Uh, Favourite flavour of crisps? I'm afraid I'm a plain, ready, salted sort of a bloke. Oh, dear. Pickled onion monster munch. Them. Yes, pickled onion monster munch. So, uh, what does it mean to be a good Christian? Um, it means to be, um, to be um, 
to keep on every day, every day, every day, day after day, every day, following Jesus, looking to Jesus, trying to live your life in the way that he wants. And, and it means when you get that wrong, when you slip up, when you fall back, it means getting up, picking yourself up, telling Jesus you're sorry, and pressing on again. Uh, I'm getting all the serious ones. Is it okay to be an adult and like glitter? I'm not sure who texted that one in. Uh, you know, I can't think of any reason why anyone would even want to clarify that question. Like, yes, yes it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> If you've got a glitter habit, it's fine. Um, is it stressful being a bishop? It's a good question. Well, do you know, it's stressful being alive, isn't it? You know, what? Wh who, who have you ever met who doesn't have points of stress in their lives? And I have a role as the bishop which has points of stress in it. Um, but... Um, God loves me for who I am. God loves me as Pete, just as God loves you for who you are. And I found that holding on to the fact that God loves me in all the ups and downs of being a bishop is the best way I know of coping with the stressful bits. Can you take a photo with me, Shay B? If, if I knew Shay? who Shay was, the answer would be yes. Come and have a picture, quick. Bring a phone and a yeah, friend. Yeah, bring a phone. <laughs> now you're all wishing you'd texted in with that, weren't you? Mind your pegs, Bishop. Your pegs are on show. Could you do I a I have been completely pegged. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Shay. It's a slow phone. It's loading. It's still loading. <laughs> Has it run out of memory? Uh, Here we go. No. Oh. Okay. It's all right, we've got plenty of time. <laughs> nice. Nice photo. <laughs> nice. Yeah, get it on Instagram, might win you a prize later from the uh, very popular vending machine. Um, sorry. Uh, Bishop, how do you keep your faith so strong with God every day? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. When, uh, from, from the day I became a Christian, from the day when I felt God was saying, Pete, I want you on my um, team, I felt a very strong sense of connection to God. So I don't, ha I don't, I'm someone who doesn't find it difficult to sense the presence of God in my life. There are certain things that I began to do the day I became a Christian, which I've been pretty f constant and faithful at keeping doing every day. Um, every day I read my Bible, every day I stop to pray. Usually it's the first thing I do every day. And if I had to say I've done one thing that has enabled me to grow through my life with a strong sense of God, it would be getting into the habit every day of reading my Bible and praying. I think this is a fantastic question. So what is your vision for the youth, for these guys in this diocese? Oh my goodness, how we need you. Um, my vision for you is um, that you will be people who can help other people in your age group to find Jesus in a way that will be transformative for their lives and that you together will engage with your local communities and with the issues facing the whole world in a way that will mean that you make a difference for Jesus. And that you'll start doing that now, not waiting 10 years or 20 years till you've got power and resources, because those things will come 
but you can be active for Jesus right now. And I hope, could I ask, um, are, there, are there clergy in the room? Could you raise a hand if you're clergy? Excellent, thank you. I hope that, I hope that in your parishes, you will be encouraged to exercise leadership responsibility now, early. I hope that you'll be given opportunities to minister, to lead, uh, to preach, to, to, um, to, sit, to sit on committee PCCs, to, to take up leadership responsibilities now in your churches. Yes. Uh, three more for you, uh, Bishop Pete. Um, I get beaten up and bullied quite often. What does God think about me? Uh, God feels bruised and God weeps when that happens to you. Whoever you are, I'm really, really sorry to hear that's your experience. Um, it's, a, it's a vicious thing that nobody should have to go through. Um, and God loves you. And one of the wonderful things about God, which the Bible constantly comes back to, is that God cares most of all for the weakest and most vulnerable people. And when your heart is breaking because you're having a hard time, God is, um, God's heart is breaking too. And you have a very special place um, in his heart. Really big question. I get the hard question. Where is God in Brexit? If, if God had hair, he would now have torn it all out over Brexit. Um, the, it, it's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's about the mess that this disagreement is making in our country. It's about the way it's turning people into enemies of one another, opponents of one another. It's the way, it's a, the, the awful thing is the way in which Brexit is breaking relationships and preventing us from being able to respect one another across the difference of opinion. And I don't think, you know, I, I don't know, maybe God feels very strongly that one side of this debate is right and the other side is wrong. It's not obvious to me that God would come down one side or the other. But what I do know is that the tone of the debate, the way that people are taking pot shots at one another, the way that we've stopped being able to um, respect one another in this country at the moment, that's what will grieve God's heart. Thank you. A final question. Bishop, what is your favorite Disney character? And may I add, why? Um, Dumbo. Yeah. Because I am a real softy. <laughs> um, almost, almost any film has the capacity to make me cry including a cartoon about an elephant. <laughs> Ladies and gents, what do we say to Bishop Pete for being so honest with us and open with us today? Thank you.